Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 11th of August. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you're interested in the most. In terms of new videos this week, so many, many years ago, I did a video on Azure Traffic Manager. I thought I should probably update it. So I go into all the details about what it's capable of, uh, the configurations you may want to use. And then I looked at the new restricted management capability for administrative units. I have some subset of users or maybe group objects or device that I don't want the regular, even global level administrators to be able to administer. I want a very specific set of people, maybe they're my C-level executives, maybe it's a group that has super powerful access to data. Well, I can now achieve that with the restricted management AUs. On to what's new. So Azure App Gateway now has custom error pages for more response codes. So it had it for 403 and 502 before, but it's really extended that out. So it's just a HTM or HTML page, has to be one megabyte or less. And I can configure those custom pages either at a global gateway level or at individual listener levels. So now I can return maybe more customized content and from my app gateway. On the storage side, so Azure Storage Mover is now available for SMB in preview. So Azure Storage Mover is all about, hey look, I have storage today on premises and I want to move it to an Azure service. So we already had that for NFS. So that would be NFS moving to blob storage. So now in preview, we have it for my SMB file shares moving to Azure files. So the whole point of this is I have an agent that I runs with network connectivity to that source volume. And then it talks to a hybrid cloud service to facilitate the actual movement. And it's a, a fully managed service and it's gonna help me do that move. And then Azure Storage Cold Tier has gone GA. So we're used to the idea of the hot tier, the cool tier, and then archive. Remember, archive is essentially offline. I can't access the data. And as we move down the tiers, it gets cheaper to store, but more expensive for the transactions. So now we have this new cold tier, which is even cheaper than cool, but obviously I pay more for the transactions. There's a minimum of 90 days. I need to retain the data in that cold tier or I pay an early kind of deletion fee. But now this is a really good fit that, hey, I really don't intend to access this data, but if I do need to, I can't wait for the time to hydrate it from archive back in. So now we can go and look at the different anticipated access patterns and maybe cold tier is a better solution for our data. And it works with all of the normal lifecycle management capabilities, et cetera. And then premium SSD V2 is available in more regions. So the big shift here is with the V2, instead of the IOPS and the throughput being tied to the capacity, well now, I configure what IOPS I want, what throughput I want, independent of the capacity. And that IOPS and throughput, I can dynamically change as maybe my needs change during the week or whatever that might be. So I only pay for both the capacity and the performance I need. On the miscellaneous side, so Chaos Studio new, now supports user assigned managed identity. So each experiment has a managed identity. Now, before it was system assigned, which means the life cycle of that identity was tied to the particular experiment. The permissions I gave that managed identity only lived with the life of the experiment. Well, now with using user assigned, the life cycle is separate from any particular experiment. I can assign it roles that will persist even after I go and delete the experiment and then go and use it on a different experiment. So it's gonna make things easier for me to manage. Azure Site Recovery had a number of updates. This is really about support for new Linux operating system versions. It was RHEL 8.8 and CentOS 8.8 and some additional bug fixes. And then this is an interesting one. So conditional access for some protected actions. So this is all about the idea that, hey, I'm performing some action in my tenant and I want to add additional requirements to it. And it's really all just based around a custom authentication strength. If I it's probably easier to just show it super quick and I'll probably do a deeper dive video into it. 
But if ordinarily I was to just go and look at my authentication strengths, so if I was to look at, hey, look, protection, um, conditional access, we see authentication strengths. So this is really just a name. So I can go and add, sorry, not strength, context, authentication context. So I can just go and add a, a custom authentication context. It's, it's just a tag. It's a name for something. But then the point is I can take this authentication context and make it the target of a particular conditional access policy. So when I think about, hey, what is my target resource? I can go and target a particular authentication context. We can see the ones that I've created. And then I would go and set conditions. So, hey, I want you to have a strong authentication. I want you to be a compliant device, whatever that might be. Well, now what I can also do is if I go and look at my roles, we have the idea of protected actions. So I can go and add a new protected action to just select the authentication context I want. So I created one, hey, it has to be a compliant device and I have to use the Authenticator app, and then I can add the permissions that I want tied to this authentication context. And what we can see right now, this is really today focused on managing conditional access, managing my sort of cross-tenant, my network locations, and the protected actions itself. So today it's just those, but they're gonna add more to this. So the key point here is that I would go and add those particular actions to this protected action that ties to a particular authentication context, and then whatever that conditional access policy that I've created tied to that authentication, it will enforce those requirements. For example, MFA or auth app or compliant device. So it's just a nice way to add additional protections to those particular actions. And that's it. So as always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.